Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us from tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for this time we call Midweek Manna, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. And we certainly hope and trust your week is going well to this point and here in the South and really, from what I can tell, across the really ent entire much of the country, particularly in the South and the East, very, very hot time. Summer is definitely arrived here and, and so we hope you'll be in safe during this time this week this past week has brought the end of really the national championships for ncaa sports for this academic year anyway 22 23 and it ended with lsu winning the baseball championship the men's college world series it was for those of us that are fans of the sport a, a fun series to watch but in watching it, and particularly in watching it when my wife's nephew went to school at LSU for a period of time, and a silly big LSU fan, of which I certainly am not, it was fun to watch him and the joy he had in watching it, but in talking to him, and he said something to remind me of something I noticed when we first went to visit LSU's campus with him a number of years ago. And that was a slogan they had and a slogan that they promoted. And one of the better slogans, though, I am definitely not an LSU fan, as I said earlier, and it's one of the best slogans I've heard for a school or university. And that slogan simply is, love purple, live gold. And it, that caught me, and I've always appreciated that. And in researching a little bit more and looking more about it, they apparently started that ad campaign, if you will, that slogan in 2010 because they wanted to present and, and emphasize, particularly with the students, an aspect of excellence and achievement and prestige and wanting to encourage that. And they even apparently give out awards they call Love Purple Live Gold for student, uh, students who have achieved greatly. And I just appreciate that, that thought with it. And in thinking about it, even though as, as Christians, probably not a certain color, you may you talk about, we can many different ways you can discuss the color purple and the royalty that goes along with that and other colors you can put in there but i thought maybe if we change it just a little bit we could say love god live golden love god live golden obviously we know the greatest command without question is to love god with all our heart soul mind and strength but if you think about live gold live golden it hopefully for most of you will come to mind and bring to mind the golden Rule, which, by the way, if you follow the Bible app and get the verse of the day uh, on your app, you may notice this week has been one of our Bible verses. It comes, of course, from Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. And, of course, many different ways, versions word it differently, but many commentators believe this particular verse really is the kind of the conclusion to the sermon part of the Sermon on the Mount as Matthew records it for us. When Jesus says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Most of us have heard the golden rule as do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And some variation of that that we see in most of our translations. And what Jesus really and truly does summarize it. Now when you study it and study through the history of it, Jesus is not quite honestly, the first person to invent a quote-unquote golden rule. There have been a number of variations of a rule similar to this, some before Jesus and some even after Jesus was concerned. History records for us in a few years before this, about AD 20, which would have been roughly 10 years perhaps before Jesus gives us what we know this Sermon on the Mount. Rabbi Hill, Hilliel it was challenged by Gentiles to really summarize the law and the prophets on a short time to summarize the law on the amount of time the gentile can stand on one leg and the rabbi thought and said what is hateful to you do not do to anyone else this is a whole law all the rest is commentary and really and truly if you summarize if you looked at all the different religions and all the different people in that time frame the things they said Many would say that if you summarize what they would say, it would be summarized this way. Don't do to others what you don't want done to you. In other words, they would say that the law is saying don't harm people. 
But Jesus' version, of course, is different, slightly different, but it is significantly different. Whereas all the others say, don't do to others what you don't want done to you. Don't be harmful in how you treat others. Jesus puts a positive spin on it. He says, do unto others what you'd have them do unto you. Well, why is that significant? Well, that means Jesus' focus is choose kindness, for instance. Show kindness to others in a way you want kindness shown to you. Choose forgiveness, as he talked about, of course, throughout really his entire ministry, obviously, but even in the Sermon on the Mount. Choose forgiveness to others the way you want to be forgiven. Be a servant to others and help others the way you would want others to help you. It's a positive spin that for those of us that are disciples of Jesus Christ, we have to remember that we are to follow as well. And while, yes, sometimes there's no question that being a disciple means don't do that, don't choose that, there, there are definitely lessons to be said that don't come in. What Jesus, though, emphasizes here is he really emphasizes, I think, throughout the Sermon on the Mount, again, throughout his teaching is, Instead of being focused on the things of night to do, let's focus on the things to do. Go and serve. Go and be kind to others. Go and be generous with others. Give to those who in, are in need. Show love to others. That's why I believe he says the second greatest command is love your neighbor as yourself. To focus on, not just on the negative, don't do to others, but be active. Go and do. And that's what we need to remember as we walk through our life. So let's love God and let's live golden. Let's live out the golden rule in all that we do. It's just a great reminder for us anytime I see this verse or come across this verse, whether it's the Bible app or any other time or place, the great reminder that we have there really is a great goal we can make for our lives each and every day. Let's go and live golden. We well, again thank you for joining us tonight and, and taking a few moments tonight to reflect on God's word together. And it's always a joy to be together. For those in our church family, it's a joy to be together, whether in person or having this time together in, in this uh, digital way through our videos. We're thankful for you to join us. And for those that may be guests of College Dale, particularly for those of you that may be from our community here in Troy, and whether you watch one of our videos for the first time or fifth or tenth time or whatever the case may be, if we, if we have not had a chance to connect with you, we would certainly love that opportunity to do so. You can call our church office, you can send us a message through your email or Facebook or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, a number of different ways to connect with us. We'd love to hear from you and have a chance to get to know you and share with you more about our church family here at Collegedale. And of course, we encourage everyone to join us for our time together this Sunday. We have Bible classes for all ages that will begin at 9 a.m. here at our church building. And then we will assemble for worship here at 10 a.m. in the auditorium. And uh, we, of course, will love to have you here in person. But for those of you that are unable to be with us in person, we will be uh, live streaming our worship on our Collegedale YouTube page, and we would encourage and love to have you join us that way as well. Again, thank you for spending a few moments with us tonight. We hope you have a blessed rest of the week. And let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. God, we, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for your word and just having time and a chance to spend even a few moments in your word and the power that is found in your word. Uh, the encouragement we have found in your word, the direction for our life that we can find in your word. And we thank you for the teachings of your son Jesus, for the example he set when he lived here on this earth, and, and for the reminder that we have to make sure that we live as followers of Jesus, as disciples of Jesus, and doing the, doing the things that he did. And we certainly saw him and see him treating others as I'm sure he would love to have been treated and help us to practice the same. Help us to choose kindness, to choose grace, to choose forgiveness and love, and it's time for us to do that. Father, I know tonight as we are uh, recording this, and, and this, during this time, and, and really like any other time, there's so many that we know that are 
that are hurting, that are going through difficult times, recovering from procedures or, or going through treatments or have loved ones going through difficult times, some that are dealing with loss of loved ones. We lift all, the, all those situations to you. Ask you to wrap your arms around them. Father, we continue to be mindful on a daily and even weekly basis of uh, really the craziness of this world and hearing stories that are going on, sad stories many times of things that happen to people, of course, things that happen in a tragic way, of course, the ongoing war in, in Ukraine. We, we just lift all those situations to you. We pray for peace and we pray for safety for all involved in the war in Ukraine and really throughout the world in different situations. We we pray for those that are involved in that to have the hearts touch and soften in a way that they will seek peace and seek it soon. And Father, as always, we pray that the leaders of our community and our state and our nation and our world, that their hearts and minds open in a way that they allow you to guide them to make decisions that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities to share with others good news about your son Jesus. Pray all this in your son's name.